Welcome to a Sunny Side Up Life podcast, a show for the woman who is ready to live an abundant life full of freedom and positivity. I'm Sammy Womack, and I'm on a mission to help you break free from survival mode, gain financial freedom, stay motivated, and focus on what matters most. Join the movement, and let's start living on the brighter side of life together. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to another episode. Today, we are going to be talking about the balance of having fun, actually enjoying your life, but still making some progress on either paying off debt or saving money or whatever your financial goal is at the moment. And how do we do this realistically and still and still live our lives and feel somewhat normal and all of that. Okay. But before we jump into that, I want to remind you guys, I realized that I have not shared on the podcast yet that we have a really awesome new free resource for the community called Rise and Shine. And Rise and Shine is basically a exclusive weekly newsletter that you get sent straight to your inbox. And it is designed to be a little piece of sunshine just for you guys, my exclusive email subscribers. So in this newsletter, you guys are going to get every single week exclusive content that you can't get anywhere else. I'm This is stuff that I'm not going to be sharing on Instagram. I'm not going to be sharing in the Facebook group or even on the podcast. I might later in time because, you know, topics overlap, but you guys are going to get first access to some of these discussions. I'm going to be writing exclusive articles just for the email. I'm going to be bringing in guest writers. Um, I'm planning on every single week there being a guest article. There is going to be exclusive um, access to promo codes or early access to resources, things like that. And this is stuff, again, that you're not going to be getting anywhere else and it is completely free. So you can sign up for this Rise and Shine newsletter at asunnysideuplife.com slash newsletter, or I will also put the link here in the show notes. And as always, you can go to asunnysideuplife.com and you'll see the subscribe button up in the top corner. So you guys can click on that and sign up. And we are right now, we're planning on these going out every single Tuesday. I'll let you guys know if the date changes for any reason. But that is what we are doing right now. And I am so, so excited about it because you guys know that I am so passionate about not only just bringing you guys free resources because, hey, we're all on this journey together, right? Um, but also just being present with you guys and being as motivational as, and inspirational as I can possibly be. Remind you guys that you're not alone on this journey and um, to share with you all of the things that have helped me and are currently helping me on this journey. Um, So really excited. If you're not on my email list, jump over and get signed up. And I hope that you guys enjoy it. Let me know uh, what you guys think about it as well. Okay. So let's, let's get into this week's topic. Again, I say this every week, but this is something that's been on my list for a while. I just feel like there's so much to talk about and so little time (laughs) and just doing an episode once a week. Uh, So the topics tend to pile up, but I think that balancing, you know, having fun and actually making progress on your financial goals is, is a balance that we all struggle with. And it's not just with our money. It's things like we struggle with, like our food, for example, you know, we, we know that we need to make progress on our healthy eating or our, um, not overeating or whatever kind of, um, meal plan we're working on. But then also we're like, yeah, but eating that cookie makes me so happy. And I feel like no matter, you know, what it is, or if it's like getting up early, like I know I need to get up early. I need to start my day on the right foot, but oh, sleeping in feels so good, right? And the the metaphors could go on and on and on because this is a natural balance of being a human, right? Um, it's the, I know that this is good for me, but also this feels good. And I think that obviously every person's balance is going to be a little different. Like some people's are going to be 70, 30, other people's are going to be a 50, 50 balance. Like it, 
obviously you have to know yourself and know what feels better for me saving money or paying off debt when we when we had debt was it that felt good that was rewarding to me i'm much more of the nerd of the relationship i'm much more of the numbers driven person um so my fun level was a lot lower than my husband's needed to be and i think it it start off by going into it knowing what you need and also knowing what your partner needs, what what balance works for them, what percentage of fun and what percentage of we need to make progress works and how you can um, assist each other in that journey, right? Because we're, we're in this journey together with our partners. But I think it's, we first start off on this journey and we have that initial freak out and we feel claustrophobic in this new plan. We feel like, oh, I'm, I'm never going to be able to, you know, go to Starbucks again. I'm never going to be able to just randomly browse the mall or w- whatever it is. Like you just start to feel so claustrophobic in this plan. And you're just like, I can't do this. I can't do this. It's going to be forever. I'm never going to have fun ever again. Right. And we jump to all these conclusions. We, we just we freak out. We get scared. But I want you guys to know that that initial freak out, that feeling of claustrophobicness in your um, claustrophobia, there we go, uh, in a new plan, it, whether it be about your money or something else intentional in your life is so normal. Say you start off on a new diet and you're like, I'm never going to be able to eat cake again. And you freak out. And that being scared of change holds you back. So I don't think that it's healthy to say, I'm never, ever going to be able to do such and such again. That's just not true. Again, it is a healthy balance of having fun, enjoying life, and also being intentional with your goals. Okay. And a lot of us, you know, we're like, hey, if I never spend money again, if I never have this fun money ever again, I'm going to go crazy. I'm going to freak out. And what will happen is I will have this freak out moment and I'll go to Target and I'll blow $200 on stuff that I don't need because I felt so deprived, right? And again, to relate this to food, because I feel like food applies to everyone even more so than money, but it's like you're, you've are you starved yourself all day, you know, when you, when you just completely starve yourself, you're not even trying to diet in a healthy way, but you deprive yourself. And what are you going to do at the end of the day? You're going to be hungry. You're going to be cranky and you're just going to go and grab whatever is in the cabinet and you're just going to binge eat. And that's not healthy at all. Okay. So this isn't about depriving yourself at all. This is about finding balance. So, so what are we supposed to do? (laughs) How in the world are we supposed to actually balance this thing? Like you say balance, but how, right? So you guys have heard me say this time and time again, but it is always worth repeating that changing your mindset has to be first. Yeah, you probably know that by now. Uh, for me, that really meant contentment. You know, that meant getting my heart right. And I was so, you know, what does everyone else think? What does everyone else have? Uh, being jealous of other people, always, always wanting more, 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 you know, I would be the person who would be driving a one-year-old vehicle and look at someone with a brand new vehicle and say, oh, I wish I could have that. And like, uh, you just had a new vehicle last year, right? <laughs> um, it's just that never, never satisfied kind of thing. And that was totally me. So I had to work on my contentment. I had to work on my heart, the true heart behind it all. Um, why was I feeling so empty? Why was I needing material items to feel, to, to fill that hole in my life? Um, and for me, that is really where minimalism kind of tied into my whole budgeting journey. And it was a lot of, you know, these material things aren't really what life is about. And yes, there are material things that do bring me joy, obviously. Um, but my whole self-worth, my whole happiness is not tied up in how many pairs of shoes I own. It's just not. It's not tied up in, is my vehicle nicer than her vehicle? 
you know, my, my true happiness is, am I happy? Am I content? Am I proud of what I have? Don't worry about what everybody else has, right? Um, and really work on that minimalist contentment mindset and work on that jealousy issue. And I think that what we have to do is, for one, pay attention and pay attention to what those triggers are. And I think just noticing it and, and making yourself aware of it. And we're all human. So we're all going to have those moments of, oh, wow, she has such a nice purse. I wish I had a purse like that. Or I wish I had a car like that. Or, oh, she always gets everything, you know, that jealousy. And I think it's, you know, when you start to notice it, you're going to go, oh, oh, that was jealousy. That was lack of contentment. Hey, we need to work on that. What what triggered that? Why don't I feel good enough, you know, and and work through that in your heart. And obviously, that's not going to be an overnight. You flip a switch, you're no longer jealous. You're no longer um, lacking contentment. But it is something that I think with being intentional or recognizing it is something that you can work towards, right? Um, so I started to really look for the little things in life that brought me joy. And I learned to look forward to them. I learned to love them. I learned to, you know, just let those things brighten my day. One of my favorite things during my journey was to get fresh flowers from the grocery store. And a lot of times I would, I was shopping at Target, at uh, Target. I was shopping at Kroger at the time, sorry. Um, and they are really great about having manager specials. So if you have a Kroger, check out your manager special, which is basically your discounted flowers. And they're flowers that are, you know, about to go out of date or are out of date. And usually they're still in pretty good shape, but they're like half price. So even if there weren't, I would get like daisies or something really cheap. And I would spend, you know, four or $5 on a really cheap um, bunch of fresh flowers. And they would last me all week, sometimes two weeks. And I would just, I put them in my kitchen window and something about that small little gesture of love for myself and happiness, like a little, a little piece of happiness in my home, it just brought me so much joy. And I was always one who felt like fresh flowers were a waste of money because they're just going to die and you're just going to throw them away. But then, you know, Hey, I'm, I'm just a girl and I love flowers. And that was something that I let myself quote unquote splurge on because it was only four or five dollars. I was saving way more money than that with my intentional meal planning, with my coupon clipping, with my shopping, the sales, all the things. And I didn't really notice four or five dollars snuck into my grocery budget. Right. Um, and I feel like it just made my heart so happy. And that might not be fresh flowers for you. It might be something more like a new magazine or a new bottle of nail polish. I went through this phase with my oldest daughter, June, um, where she was really, you know, she she experienced the most change with this because obviously the other girls were babies <laughs> during all of this. So they didn't really know any better. But June did. And she was very used to getting treats and getting things anytime we left the house. And so it was a, it was a little bit of an adjustment for her. So we would splurge on like an extra box, like a box of cookies, because obviously we don't need the cookies. Or we would get a bottle of nail polish. I would get like a $1, $2 little cheapy bottle of nail polish. And that would be mine and her treat for the week. And we would make it a big deal. And it would... It would be like, okay, Junie, which color of nail polish do you want to pick out this week? Or what kind of cookies are we getting? We're getting one box of cookies. Let's be really excited. Let's get that box of cookies and let's enjoy it. And let's really be intentional about enjoying it. And, you know, I had to set that tone for her. So whatever that is for you, if that new magazine is what gets you through the month, because, you know, you're going to be reading that magazine. Like I I love Oprah magazines and I went through a little phase of Oprah magazines were my treat and, um, you know, whatever it is. And it might change, obviously, like sometimes it was nail polish, sometimes it was flowers, sometimes it was a magazine and it's only a couple of dollars and it kept me so just excited about life and something to look forward to. 
And you might be like at the beginning of your journey and you're thinking, okay, I can't even spare $5. So maybe that is a nature walk. You're like every Tuesday after school, we're going to the park or we're going on a walk or, you know, Fridays are movie nights at home. We're going to pop popcorn. We're going to take turns picking a movie, whatever your little thing is, find it and love it and look forward to it. And It is so true that saying that it's the little things that matter. It's the little enjoying the little things in life. And it is so true. It it really, really is. And sometimes if you've been moving so fast through your life and you've been just blowing through money and going to expensive restaurant and going out to the movie theater to see movies and just just barreling through money and moving, moving fast with your free time. This slowing down, this having a movie night at home, this going to the park instead of to somewhere that costs money, it is going to be such a breath of fresh air. Trust me, the quality time is going to be so worth it. It might take a little bit of adjusting if that's what you're used to. It might take your kids a little bit of time to adjusting, but write it out and trust me on this one that you will be so happy a few weeks into it that you did it. Okay. And I think that also having an awesome big goal to look forward to is so important. So not only do you know why you're cutting back, but also your family knows why you're cutting back. Okay. And we have to know that we're doing this for a greater purpose. And obviously this might be a little more difficult, which we're going to talk about next week, kind of more of the getting your kids on board, because I've been getting a lot of questions about that. Um, and obviously, you know, it might be more difficult if your kids are a little bit older, if they're teenagers and they're like, they have their own thing going on and you're just like, now you come in and ruin all the fun. (laughs) Um, but I think keeping that communication open with them and being like, Hey, this is why we're doing this guys. It is. And it's about freedom and it's going to be what's best for the family. And Showing not only yourself, but your entire family that, you know, maybe saving up to buy a house or throwing more money into retirement is ultimately more important than going out to eat multiple times a week or buying a new pair of jeans every single month or whatever you're used to. That is basically a waste of money. (laughs) And I think focusing on that bigger goal and, and keeping the communication up with your family about what that bigger goal is is so, so important. And (laughs) understanding that you're not perfect and your budget isn't going to be perfect either. So don't beat yourself up, okay? Give yourself some grace and know that this is going to take a little bit of time. Get over the mindset that if you go over budget once, it's going to be the end of the world. Because trust me, it won't be. I still go over budget sometimes, okay? And obviously, I know how to do a budget, (laughs) but we're all human and we're not perfect. You don't have to be perfect to be successful at this, okay? You just have to try your best and give yourself a little bit of grace when your best isn't as good as you initially wanted it to be. So let's jump into the side of this that a lot of you are probably like, okay, but when do I get to have fun? (laughs) So the first side of this kind of balancing act between spending and savings is spending. And I, I know what you're probably thinking and definitely whichever one of you or your partner are the spenders are thinking like, Hey, I'm on a budget. I'm never going to get to spend money ever again. You're going to want to listen to this part (laughs) because it is okay to spend money, you guys, when you're on a budget. It is okay to spend money. Just know that if you are trying to save money or pay off debt, that you're just going to maybe spend a little less than you are used to, okay? But that doesn't mean you don't get to ever spend money again. And I don't believe in guilting myself um, when I'm shopping. So I am not one of these people that is anti-shopping. So you, you've you probably seen, especially if you follow the debt-free community on Instagram, you've probably seen 
people who will um, really guilt themselves when they shop. That's not me. Um, I love get. I love shopping. I genuinely love the act of shopping, like going to the mall, especially if I don't have my kids, especially if it's just me and my sister, like that is the best time for me. Like Black Friday shopping is better than actual Christmas to me. That is, that is where it's at for me. And I will not feel guilty about that. I am not one of those people that will punish myself because I want to buy things. Okay. But what I am against is I am anti wasteful shopping. I am anti throwing things in your shopping cart to feel, to fill some kind of void in your heart. Obviously I'm against that. I am against buying crap that you don't need. Um, I am against, you know, buying new clothes after new clothes after new clothes when you haven't even taken the tags off of what you bought last week. Obviously, I'm against that. I'm against wasteful shopping. I'm against wasting money. I'm against cluttering up your house with stuff you don't need. And I am against shopping to the point that you hurt your family financially. Okay. I am anti that. But The thing about shopping on a budget is that when you tell yourself, hey, I'm allowed to spend $20 in here and you've done the rest of your budget where you know, okay, it's not going to hurt us. We're still paying the electric bill. We're still throwing some money at debt. We're still this, that, and the other. I can spend this $20 and you know what? You better spend it and you better spend it guilt-free and you better enjoy every single last drop of that $20. You know what I'm talking about? When you get that like really, really good cup of coffee and you drink every single last drop because you're about to get your money's worth, right? (laughs) That's what you have to do when you're shopping on a budget, okay? Don't feel guilty. You allowed it. You put it in your budget you get whatever, whatever that amount of money is. Okay. And when you're at the beginning of your journey, this might just be $5 flowers. This might just be a $3 magazine. Okay. When you're four or five years into this budget, that might look like a hundred dollars. That might look like $500. I don't know. I don't know where you're going to be, you know, but the important thing is, is it says on your budget, Hey, you are allowed to spend X number of dollars And girl, you better spend it guilt-free, right? And boy, you better spend it guilt-free. Like your partner has to have their guilt-free money as well. And obviously this can bring stress on a marriage. So we've already talked about getting your husband on board. I'll link to that episode if you haven't listened to it. Amazing, amazing response from this episode um, because it's something that's really, really hard. But you have to remember that your partner is human as well. And they need some wiggle room too. They need some stress, some stress-free, guilt-free spending money, especially if your partner is the spender and you're the kind of more of the nerd person. Um, and it has to be guilt-free. You hear me? Guilt-free for both of you. Okay. But that looks like being intentional with the amount of money that that is. So it can be guilt-free and that might need to be literally withdrawing the cash to say, here's your $20, here's your $40, whatever it is. Don't even bring me receipts. I don't even care how you spend it. Goodbye. It's gone. (laughs) Just spend it and enjoy every last drop of it. Right? So, you know, maybe lowering your fun money (laughs) might be where you are on your budgeting journey. Um, maybe you're kind of new to budgeting and you're just realizing like, oh my gosh, I'm allowed to have fun money. What is this? This is a brand new concept. Yes, you are, but maybe you just need to lower it from what you're used to. Okay. Maybe you've been going out to lunch every single day and you're spending like a hundred dollars a week on eating lunch out. Maybe you need to just reel it in a little bit and think, all right, hey, we're never going to reach our financial goals. We're never going to pay off our debt. 
at this rate. So I need to reel it in. And instead of $100, I just need to spend $20. I just need to spend $10. Okay. And then kind of work on that contentment issue. And I think that kind of metaphor of like drinking it all to the last drop (laughs) will really help with your contentment because you're like, all right, I only get this little bit. I'm going to enjoy it, enjoy it, enjoy it. Okay. And you know, you gotta, you gotta reel it back in. So that looks like, again, like movie nights at home, maybe a frozen pizza instead of a takeout pizza. It's still fun. It's just cheaper. Okay. So lower that fun money to fit your new budget, your realistic life and your new goals. That doesn't mean it has to be zero, but it probably needs to be lower than it has been in the past. (laughs) And of course it can be zero. That is the beauty of It's your budget. You do what works for you. And so if you need to go through a week or two, and we definitely had those weeks, especially at the beginning of our journey, where we're like, zero fun money. We're about to get creative. (laughs) And we're about to have a free date night at home. We're going to put the kids to bed early. We're just going to sit outside. We're going to talk. We're going to have a glass of wine at home. Or we're going to have a movie night at home. Or whatever. Maybe it needs to be zero this week because you're like, hey, we're going to hustle, but we're going to do this intentionally and we're going to do it together. Okay. So it can be zero, but just make sure that you're both on board with that. Maybe your fun money is zero this week and your partner's is 10 or $20 because they need that to get them through the week. But you're like, hey, I I thrive off this challenge. I'm going to do this. It doesn't matter what you do as long as you're intentional, you agree, you're both happy <laughs> with what you decide and all that. Okay. So I think that when you're planning out how much fun money, it's about looking ahead and creating a unique budget for the budget period ahead. So if you have two weeks between now and the next payday or one week or four weeks or whatever it looks like for you, look ahead on your calendar and be like, okay, we're probably going to want to go out to eat um, this day because this thing. Or, um, you know, so-and-so is coming into town and we're probably going to want to go and do this. Or, you know, look ahead on your calendar. Plan ahead, okay? And then also I think give yourself a little, like, miscellaneous money because especially when you're planning ahead, for us, you know, we'll do – We do a six-week budget, so we'll do our spending money. We'll do a two-week period of spending money, and then we'll do a four-week period of spending money, which makes absolutely no sense, I know, but that's the way my husband's pay schedule falls. So when I'm planning out the four-week spending budget, that's really hard to know. Hey, two weeks from now, um, you're going to be really overwhelmed, and you're going to want to just call Domino's and order a pizza. I don't really know for sure when that's going to happen, but I will give myself kind of a buffer, kind of a miscellaneous because it's really hard to know a month from now what you're, what's going to happen or, you know, an event pops up that you had no idea even existed, right? But there are some things that you can anticipate. And you know you're going to go out of town this weekend. You know someone's going to come into town and visit or whatever it is. Um, So I think it's like looking ahead at your calendar and trying your best to more or less predict the future (laughs) of what you're going to want to do and what you're going to need. Okay. And then making a unique budget for that specific budget period. Okay. Um, and, And doing the best you can. And I think... You know, when you're when you're looking ahead, it's not about restricting yourself from, hey, we're going to go out of town and we might want this amount of money to, you know, have fun, really enjoy the weekend. But you also don't want that weekend of fun to hurt your long term goals. So it's the same thing back to I love a good shopping trip. I love a good TJ Maxx, like finding the deals on some clothes. I'm for it. But I don't like it at the expense of hurting my savings goals, at the expense of knowing that I'm going to have an argument with my husband when I get home because he's going to be like, why did you buy all this stuff? (laughs) We're supposed to be saving money. Or I don't like it at the expense of having that buyer's remorse, sinking feeling, 
every time I look at that shirt that I know I shouldn't have bought, right? So it's okay to have money as long as, is it's okay to spend money um, as long as it doesn't hurt your long-term goals, okay? And it's okay to do fun things along the way. You just can't, you know, you can't overdo it, but you also can't deprive yourself, okay? You guys, this is not a joke with this spending money. It's not like, oh, she has a shopping addiction or, oh, he has a coffee addiction. He can't stop going through the drive-thru to get coffee. You guys, this is something that I think gets discredited a lot. And if you just up and take fun money away, you really will go crazy. You really will hate this journey. This journey is not a punishment. This journey is, we have a big goal to get to. Like we're going to retire in our fifties or we're going to pay off our house before we're 40 or like whatever your goal is. Okay. We have some big places to go, but we definitely don't want to go crazy in the process. We don't want to fight with our spouse and cause a divorce over this. I have seen time and time again in, you know, I, I used to really, really follow when I was first starting this journey big groups on Facebook, like about debt-free journeys. And, you know, there's tons of Facebook groups about this kind of stuff. And I would read comments. And I remember this comment one time that literally shook me to my core of a woman, like, urging people, don't take all of your husband's fun money away. Because I thought that I was being strict. I thought that I was doing what was best for the family to get to our bigger goals. And I made him so unhappy that I pushed us apart and he filed for divorce. You know what I'm saying? So obviously not every instance is going to be that extreme, but you guys, we have to think about the now and about the future. Okay. And like I said at the beginning, that balance, that percentage looks different. Some people it's a 50, 50, like present and future. Some people it's 30, 70. Okay, I'm much more of a, I'm 30% now, 70% the future. Like I'm focused on the big picture. My husband's a little more of a 50-50. Like he's like, hey, we're in this moment now. But also like, yeah, I know I, I would like to retire at a decent age. Okay. Um, you know, we don't, we don't want this budgeting journey or this debt-free journey to feel like our life is a punishment. We want to have a great life. We want to have the abundance of the here and the future, okay? Um, and we don't want you to go crazy in the process, um, but maybe that fun thing needs to be a freer, uh, a cheaper, more frugal <laughs> thing. And I think that also, you know, remembering that having a little bit of fun now really keeps you motivated for the future. You know, it's just like how refreshed you feel when you finally go on a date night or when you find, when you get a weekend away from your kids or a weekend away, you know, even with the kids and you just weekend away from the house or just a day out something. How refreshed do you feel? How much does that really, really reboost your motivation? Like you just get another like surge of energy. Like, okay, I did it. I'm refreshed. I'm ready to dive back in again. I want you to budget in that fun money because I want you to enjoy your life. I want you to take those steps to stay motivated because this is a long journey, okay? This isn't a we're just going to like, just kind of hold our breath through this for a year or two. You guys, this is a lifelong journey of intentionality. This is not a punishment. Okay. I don't want you to get burnout. I don't want the, I don't want you to dread all of this. The whole point of this journey is to have financial freedom and to have an abundant life. Okay, so let's talk about the opposite side of the balancing act over here. Okay, savings slash paying off debt. Okay, so 
I'm probably going to just keep saying savings because that's personally what goal I'm on. But know that you can interchangeably replace saving and paying off debt, okay? It's basically the same thing. You're being intentional with your financial future, okay? Whether that looks like saving or that looks like paying off your debt, all right? Um, so on the side of saving money or paying off debt, um, getting your your ultimate financial goal um, and making that always priority number one, so whatever that financial goal looks like for you, that is always priority number one. Although having fun and, you know, really enjoying life obviously is so important. I think that it always needs to take a little bit of a back seat to your ultimate goal, okay? Having fun needs to be a very close second, but still be second, okay? Um, especially if you're really, really just getting started, okay? Obviously, later into your journey, you're debt-free, you have a six-month emergency fund, like you're really just making money moves, and you can loosen the reins a little bit. But if you're just getting started, hey, this is your season to buckle down. And that's okay. And that's normal. And you're not alone in that. And remember that having fun is going to be a second right now. Okay. And maybe later you can let them kind of switch places off and on, which is kind of where we are now. Like they take turns going back and forth, but not now, not at the beginning. Okay. Remember that you have big goals. You have big dreams and, you know, you have a really bright future to look forward to and you've got to keep that as your number one. So this is where you start asking yourself, do I really need this new thing or could I have fun on $10 less? Could I throw 10 more dollars at my debt right now? Could I have fun for free right now instead of doing whatever I'm about to do? Because, you know, getting to that, that, that goal in the future is, is our first priority. And so maybe we have to get a little creative. Maybe we have to challenge ourselves through this. Okay. I'm always up for a good challenge. I love a good no spend week. You know, I, I'll be honest, I've never done a no spend month because that's a really long time, but I love a good no spend week. I love a good challenge of a no spend day. Like how can we get out of the house, do something fun and not spend money? And I make it a challenge. I, I learned to let it be fun. Okay. If you just started this, this journey, you're probably thinking, wow, she's crazy. She's obsessed with saving money and somehow she thinks this is fun. I don't understand, (laughs) but I want you to learn how to let saving money become something fun and something that you actually look forward to. Okay. And now that my husband and I are several years into this journey, we actually look forward to payday because we know we're going to be able to save money because we're going to be able to see that savings account number grow, our percentage towards our goal grow. This year, we have made it our goal to save $40,000 and it is honestly just out of our reach. And it is a little bit of a challenge. And I'm up for that challenge. It's fun to me. I want to see how close can we get? Okay, how how much can we save every single payday? And it's it's a game to me now. And, you know, we we really, really look forward to it. And I think once you kind of master that mindset, master that contentment, saving money and paying off debt actually does become something that you look forward to. So if you're not feeling that way now, know that that feeling will happen eventually, okay? It's just going to take some getting used to like anything else, building any other habit. And I think ultimately knowing that saving money by taking those little steps are really just adding up for big fun money in the future. So cutting back on your spending money and um, learning how to save money is ultimately so we can have really big, awesome fun in the future. 
So, for example, our family, one of the first things, the first big fun thing that we did was we bought a boat. You guys probably know the story of our boat and and all of that. Um, and we didn't buy a really expensive boat. It was sixty eight hundred dollars, um, a nineteen ninety one. This is about to be our third year having this. You can do the math. It's a pretty old boat, but for us, we were cutting back our spending. We were saving up our extra money because we knew that having that boat was more important than all those silly little things that we had been wasting our money on sacrificing the little things here and there in order to save up that money to be able to have a boat a irreplaceable amount of memories with our kids as a family out on the lake in nature having quality family time that was so much more important than those little silly quote unquote fun things that we had been wasting our money on. Um, you know, that that would have been like going out to eat. We used to spend like, oh my goodness, probably around eight hundred dollars a month, you know, which is it's only two hundred dollars a week. That really doesn't take long to add up to that. Or I would oh my gosh, I bought new clothes all the time. I bought ridiculous stuff for June when she was a baby, I was constantly buying her new things and all those things added up, right? And now we know that we can do without all those silly things because now we get to cash flow our vehicles. We know that my husband's going to retire at a pretty young age. Whatever your goal is, maybe your goal is to go to Disney or maybe your goal is to open a business or become a stay-at-home parent. Once you get your debt paid off, you're like, hey, if we are debt-free, we can totally live on one income. And I can be a stay-at-home mom like I've always wanted to be. Isn't that ultimately more important than all of those silly little quote-unquote fun things? Think about that. Let that soak in for a little bit. Cutting back on those little things adds up to super big life altering fun things like being debt free and cash flowing things okay you guys and i want to leave you with this little bit of something to kind of think about so we talked about the percentage of the here versus the there the the present versus the future and everyone's percentages are different. Everyone's balance is different, okay? But something that I have really realized in a, I'm a very future-focused person, and I know that about myself, but I have, in my journey over the past year or so of working through my anxiety, and I think a lot of my anxiety was driven from the focusing on the future, the future, the future, and it's always like, trying to get there. If, if you have anxiety, you probably understand what I'm talking about. Um, if you don't understand that, then you're blessed <laughs> to not know what that feels like. Um, but I kind of had an epiphany a few weeks ago, which is really what prompted me to sit down to record this episode, is that I realized that saving money isn't all about the future. It's actually a lot for the present peace of mind as well, because I know that if an emergency came up, if my car broke down, if my husband got hurt at work and was laid off for several weeks because he got hurt or, or all these, all these irrational fears, I, I, I guess they are kind of rational fears because life happens. Okay. But all of these fears that I have of what if he gets hurt? What if a car breaks down? What if, what if, what if, what if having that savings account now to the point that our, we have six month emergency fund plus a few thousand more because we're saving towards our future house, having that in place brings me so much peace now. Saving money is not just for the future. It's also for the peace now. I don't really have to worry. Obviously, I don't want him to ever get hurt. 
obviously I don't want a vehicle to break down or one of my kids to get sick or something really expensive and terrible. But I know that if it was to happen, we would be okay. So not only is future me taken care of because she's going to have this beautiful house and she's going to have a husband who's retired at a young age and she's going to have this and that. Present me is okay. Present me is taken care of because she has peace. Okay. She doesn't have to constantly look over her shoulder of if this bill is paid or what if that happens or all the, all the worries, all the fears that come with life. So I want to leave you with that. Saving isn't just for the future. It is also for the present. Okay. I hope that that was helpful. I hope that this message was helpful. Um, I hope that this brings you peace. I hope that this gives you a little bit of permission to get your, get your fresh flowers. Okay. Withdraw $10 from your bank account and go to Target and do it guilt free. As long as it's not hurting your family in the big picture. Okay. Give yourself a little bit of breathing room. You are human. You are human. It's okay to spend money. It's okay to save money. It's actually really healthy to do both. All right. You guys, I hope this message was helpful. Like always, please share because you never know who needs to hear this message. Again, don't forget to get on the list for the Rise and Shine newsletter. Go to asundaysideoflife.com slash newsletter. And you can get on the list. It's completely free. You guys are going to get exclusive content. Um, These are already going out. And I am so excited. So proud of them. I don't want you guys to miss any of the issues of this newsletter. Because like I said, you're not going to get this information anywhere else. So don't miss out. All right. As always, if you haven't subscribed yet, please hit the subscribe button. Leave me a review. Let me know what you think. Um, Your reviews are what help podcasts grow. Help other women just like you who need to hear this message um, to find us in this little community. Um, And that's it for me this week, you guys. I hope that you enjoyed, and I will talk to you guys next week. Bye, guys.